Hi, today I'll be showing you how to transform your Sennheiser HDR160 headphones uh, that are wireless into uh, wired headphones if the transceiver is either broken or missing or what have you, um, or if you just don't want to have to change the batteries all the time. So here we go, I've already removed the screws on both these sides. So inside, you can see that we have um, the wires coming from the speakers on both sides. Uh, on this one, you will see that it goes to a, the speaker wire comes from a little blue wire, and you could tell that goes to the white wire on this side, so that just goes to the other side, so as long as we know that, we don't have to worry with that side. Or you can just open um, on the circuit board side, which is the right side of the headphones. You could just read the descriptions on the circuit board that say, um, uh, right po R positive and L positive, and... Uh, R negative and L negative, so that way you can um, find out where we need to attach it to. So the first thing we will be doing is desoldering all the, uh, peeling back this plastic, and then desoldering all these connections. All right. So now that we got our soldering iron ready, what we can do is slowly um, remove each of these wires off the circuit board one at a time. That way, um, we can get the circuit board out nice and easily. You can desolder the wires nice and easily just by giving a slight pull while you touch the soldering iron to the connection and they usually should come loose fairly easily. All right, now that we have all of our wires disconnected off the circuit board, we'll grab a nice uh, P1 sized screwdriver. Uh, I'm using an iFixit kit right here, and we'll uh, unscrew the circuit board. A little tip I use is my iFixit kit. I've uh, glued little neodymium magnets to the lid, so that way I have it as a little parts tray for all my screws. So you never lose anything while you're working. And it makes it really easy because the screwdriver is also magnetic, so you can just use that magnet, which is a little stronger, to remove the screw from your screwdriver and uh, keep your project one-handed. So, now we will not be needing any of these wires that go toward the batteries, so this red wire and this black wire here we will not need. Only the uh, little blue and silver wire coming from the right speaker and the white and... Uh, copper wire that goes all the way to the uh, left speaker. Those are the only two we will... Right, now that we have the circuit board out, what we'll want to do is uh, take that circuit board and we'll want to get another audio jack, something like this. Um, and you could get a blank circuit board like this. These come in uh, large packs on Amazon very cheaply. They're just uh, ran, so, uh, little breadboards with uh, no solder connections between any of the joints. You can just make the connections via wires yourself. Um, so what we'll want to do is like find out about where this uh, audio jack will go on the board. And we'll take a sharpie or something and mark where the uh, port will go about. And what we'll want to do is take those markings and line them up with the um, power jack here a little bit back so that way we have room to trim the edge here up to that point so that the um, audio jack will actually insert into that hole a little bit and keep itself steady. Um, so what we we'll want to do is line that up so that the edge of the board is right uh, ahead of the edge of the first set of holes and we'll uh, hold it there and we'll trace where um, these holes will go usually with like a little sharpie or something, you can mark the um, location for the holes for where the previous circuit board used to be. And then you'll be able to go and uh, trace this as well and uh, cut it out with either a little hacksaw, Dremel, uh, whatever your choice is. And you then you can, um, we'll have a circuit board that matches the size and hole pinout of the original one 
and it makes it really easy to um, fit back in there and if you ever decide to chew, uh, swap these back to the original configuration with the wireless headphones it's a really simple just swap the board and re-solder the wires back together so right now I'm gonna go trim this board up and I'll be right back alright so now that you have your circuit board all cut out with the holes and uh, shaped right you'll want to uh, put your audio jack back in and get your soldering iron and solder that in place Alright, so now that you have your little jack soldered onto your circuit board, uh, what you'll need to do is figure out which of these goes to which channel. Uh, now that you got it all soldered up, you'll need to know the pinout of this connector. So the simple way to do that is to connect a little uh, one of your connectors to it. And then on the other end of the connector, you can um, connect the multimeter to the tip, which you know is negative, uh, according to the pinout of um, the audio jacks and I'll uh, have the multimeter on continuity beeping setting and you can have uh, when you touch it to it you will you should get a beep when you're touching the channel so that one's the right one you connect it to the center which is I mean that, that one's the left one sorry and you connect it to the center which is the le right one and you can tell which that one is and the back which is the ground or the common between the two and that's usually the back pin there so now that we know the channels that we have uh, we can, we've can uh, we written them down on the board. I've marked the right channel in red and I've put an L and R pointing to each connector. Um, now we'll just need to connect the wires to it after we... Uh, and um, the way to do that is simply uh, you can just simply solder the wires under the circuit board straight to where the connector is an uh, easy way to do that. So this one I know goes to the left speaker so I can just connect the straight the white wire to the left connector simply by just soldering those together get a little extra solder on there retin these connections All right, now it should be able to solder on nice and easily. Just flow that solder together. And then the right channel, which comes from the right speaker, which will be this little blue wire for the positive. We will uh, add some more solder to the tip of that wire. It's always good to add uh, fresh solder when soldering wires that you've desoldered from other stuff, so that way it's got the same solder that you're soldering with, because sometimes um, the solders might have slightly different melting points, and it's easier to um, solder together if you have all the same solder, so it just flows together um, on the wires. Right, and we just solder that one directly to the right channel. And then we solder the grounds, which are the um, bare copper wires, to this back terminal back here. We'll solder them both to that terminal. All right, and now at this point we should be able to test it by plugging it into an audio source without um, having uh, the thing put together yet. That way we make sure we know that we have everything wired correctly and it works before we um, can put it together. So I will do that now. All right, now that it's all been tested and we know that it all works, our next step is to uh, put this circuit board back in place and connect it back together. 
Uh, I have found out that on mine, the hole right here is a tiny bit too small for the, the jack that I happen to be using. You might run into this, you might not. It depends on um, which jack you choose to use. This one is just uh, one that I have salvaged out of some old electronic component that I am not sure of which that was. But um, I will just have to match, uh, find out what drill bit that is and drill that hole out and then it should fit right in. Alright, and now that I have uh, drilled out that hole slightly, I only needed to drill it out to a quarter inch. Uh, with a quarter inch drill bit and now we can line this uh, back in here really easily and just screw it back in. One tip with working with these uh, custom circuit boards that you've drilled custom holes, you may run into that the holes don't line up just perfectly so it might be easier to not screw both the first screw in all the way until you get all the screws in then you'll want to tighten them down all the way. That way um, if there's any little bit of play that um, they don't line up just right, sometimes you can get them to line up a little bit and then uh, tighten it down and then you should work. And now all we have to do is just close it up. And we will have our own custom pair of Sennheiser HDR160 uh, wired headphones instead of wireless. So, makes it a lot easier to without having to change the batteries and you don't have to worry about a transmitter, it's just the wire. Uh, some of us, me personally, I prefer wired headphones because you don't have to worry about those kinds of things. Um, yes, you do have a wire to deal with, but honestly, I'd rather deal with a wire than having to charge a battery all the time. All right, and there we go, there's our finished product. You, uh, from the outside, you would not be able to tell that these have been modified at all. Um, the only difference is that in the spot that used to be a power jack is now an audio jack uh, that you have the direct audio input straight to the uh, headphone speakers.